As Governor Malloy has declared that the next session will have an education agenda, Connecticut has a new school's chief. 39-year-old Stephen Pryor is a graduate of Yale and Yale Law School and has been busy ever since. He helped found Amistad Academy, one of Connecticut's first charter schools. He later worked for the Partnership for New York City, supporting public education. After 9-11, he did rebuilding work for Lower Manhattan Development Corp. And for the past five years, he's been deputy mayor for economic development in the city of Newark, working with uh, the famous mayor, Cory Booker. We are happy to have Stephen Pryor with us, along with Romney Iyer, former CEO and chairman of the Hartford, who is now on the board of the Connecticut Council on Education Reform. Gentlemen, thanks for both being here. Thank you for having us, Lori. Stephen, I guess if we could talk to you, and, and what is your opinion? What, how do you see the state of Connecticut schools? First, I'm honored that Governor Malloy and the State Board of Education appointed me. You know, there are bright spots and there are exemplary practices all over our state. There are terrific schools and there are truly uh, moving forward districts. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that there are still too many students who are struggling. Um, and it's not just in our, uh, in our high poverty districts, it's even in our more affluent districts. And we need to reach them and elevate the level of instruction and student performance. Is there one thing that right off the bat you say, okay, this is something we're going to have to do? Well, there are states throughout the country that are making a difference, that are known for their school reform, and they're, they are building coalitions for school reform across different constituencies, and they're raising student performance even in places where it's unexpected based upon previous track records. I think we can follow the, the track, the, the, uh, the example of those other states. So what, what states are those? Well, there are many these mm -hmm. days. The, you know, people look at Massachusetts and Delaware in terms of proximate examples, and Rhode Island is making some strides, and then there are Tennessee and Louisiana that are trying some things that are, uh, that are really innovative and um, these things may or may not be compatible with Connecticut, but we can hybridize the best ideas and we can, most importantly, at the school level, bring to students, bring to parents, bring to teachers these in, the, the innovations that make sense. Interesting. Rami, um, you know, our good friend um, Rick Green asked the question in his article uh, a few days ago, um, why now might be the difference? Why, you know, Stefan's tenure here might be the difference? What we can expect that would be different? And I'm wondering what you, what you think. Well, first of all, uh, Laurie, we're excited that Stefan's in town. I start with the governor. The governor has clearly articulated that 2012 is a year in which he's going to focus on education as his primary agenda. And I think leadership begins at the top, but the governor clearly is taking ground on that. And with Stefan, coming to this equation with a lot of positive background and ability to work with a variety of stakeholders and with a board now who's got almost uh, six or seven new board members who are also very enthusiastic about wanting to make change here. I think we are at the cusp of something that is going to happen in this state that could be very promising. And I really look forward to working with Stephen, our advice. council, our council is very, very focused. You know, we were uh, formed after our commission work, and we're really looking forward to supporting, as a business community and nonprofit community, supporting uh, the commissioner's work. And if I may, the council has already generated ideas, mm -hmm. um, a preliminary blueprint that we've been reviewing together, and there are multiple organizations. The council is among the leaders. Uh, there are multiple organizations, including parents' organizations, the teachers' unions, that are coming forward with ideas. We'd have to bring those together into a true, a concrete agenda, and under the governor's leadership and the legislature's leadership, put together a legislative package in the new year that can take us to the next generation. How unique is, is his group? Because it's a group of business business and philanthropic leaders. I mean, how helpful do you think that that might be for you? Remarkably. I have to say, I spent time, time just today, Ram, Ramani, as you know, with uh, some of the staff of the organization and board members have been in close consultation with us already. There are ingenious notions that they're bringing forward about how simple things and profound things can be changed on the teacher effectiveness front, on the support for public schools front in terms of rallying the business community. On multiple fronts, I know we can do it. You know, uh, you guys are both uh, have business backgrounds. I'm wondering how different do you think developing, you know, the economy in Newark is, developing an economy or businesses is from developing schools or, or well, these developing are, these classrooms? Are, these students. are intertwined ideas. As Governor Malloy has said multiple times, he's visiting employers. He's done a jobs tour and he has a jobs package moving in the legislature. And what the governor has said is that CEOs like Romney have said to him, we don't have Connecticut residents to fill our vacant yeah. positions in the middle of the Great Recession. People who are qualified, there's no better pipeline. They're, they're, the only pipeline is our, is our school system. That's what we have to improve. Well, this is so crucial, Lori, for the Connecticut economy. 
as you think about uh, students who are coming from higher poverty backgrounds, we have grown from 28% of students in that background to 33%. And if in the long run we want to make this a vibrant, vital economy, we have to invest in education. Education is the best area for the, uh, the state government to invest in because it secures our future. I've read some of the comments um, that you had recently given to the State Board of Education. You talked a lot about accountability. Yes. I mean, is that a, a basic business practice that you think translates? Or, or Tell us more about Absolutely. That. The accountability begins at the top. The governor leads, and the governor has stepped forward and said, I'm going to lead. Secondly, the Board of Education must lead here. Third, the commissioner must lead. And then inside of these districts, we've got to hold district uh, leaders as well as principals and teachers, all accountable, up and down the chain. We can't just gang up on teachers. We have to have accountability up and down the chain where we set ambitious goals uh, to address this issue of the achievement gap and make it possible for all students of all backgrounds to really accomplish a lot. Stefan, I heard that you, uh, you're going to go on a listening tour. Tell yes, me indeed. about that. Um, I've already started by uh, visiting schools in our state. I'll be visiting with uh, the regional organizations of superintendents to hear superintendents' views, principals' views, teachers' views, parents' views, also going out and hearing from constituent organizations on what, what, uh, what worries them and what they view as promising in our system in every corner of our state to Is make sure that like I'm a, hearing from a, the ground up. A town hall tour? or what, How are you going to hear from parents? You know, I think smaller for Forums are generally, not exclusively, better where we can sit around a table and talk turkey about what's working and what isn't, mm -hmm. and I can get an on-the-ground feel for what's going on. And I've already, I just did a closed-door session in a small district in our state, and it was incredibly valuable to hear from the principals, the superintendent, some parent representatives, some elected leadership about what has to happen. One thing that, one question that people have looking at your resume <coughs> because of your um, affiliation with the charter schools, people have been wondering, I mean, is that going to be your tendency to, to favor that kind of organization? Or, or the, the way to think about it, in my view, is that uh, we in this state need to be for effective schools, whatever the governance model. Charter schools are one mechanism through which to create potentially great schools. By the way, there are terrible charter schools that need to be taken out of service because they are not properly offering service to our children. But um, there are great magnet schools, there are great conventional public schools, there are great VOAG schools, there are great VOTech schools. We need to promote the best, the most exemplary schools, replicate them, emulate them, expand them. Romney, how are you going to um, hold him, his feet to the fire? Oh, it's a very good question, Lori. First of all, we are going to support the commissioner's efforts because it's so key that the business community and the nonprofit community get vitally engaged in this whole thing. So it starts there. But having said that, even in the near term, if we could do three things, if we could really improve teacher effectiveness in the school system, because teachers are the single biggest source of leverage on student attainment, if we could get outstanding leaders in the school, that is school principals and districts, and if, you, if we could turn around what are today chronically underachieving schools, which is over 120 schools in the state of Connecticut, if we could see those three things change in the next three years with a Department of Education that is organized to make that happen with an agenda that is very, very positive, aggressive, working with the State Board of Education, God, I could say in two years to three years, we'd have started to make a gigantic difference. And that's how we're going to keep leaning on the commissioner. And certainly the governor is going to do the same, I'm sure. Here, here, if that's your leaning, bring it on. That's, that's exactly where we want to go. All right. Well, we, it's a lot of hard work, and we appreciate it. And I know that everyone certainly hopes that the end goal is, is achieved. Right. We, we appreciate it. Romney Iyer, thanks for being here. Stephen Pryor, welcome to Connecticut. Thank thanks you, a lot. Lori. Okay, coming up after the break, the debate over the death penalty continues in Connecticut. We are going to hear one viewpoint from former Connecticut Governor John Rowland.